food for the first few weeks after we gave birth. You have no idea. Every one of you, I mean, I could literally look around at each person and thank you all individually for everything that you've been a part of in our life. I'm not going to do that, but I want to just say a big thank you. I want to say a big I love you to everybody, too, for uh, the role that you played. You know, it's been it's been such an amazing journey, and I think that I think that one of the things that's really powerful is the idea of tov lahodot l'ashem. It's really good. It's good to thank Hashem. In uh, this week's parsha of Akev, it says that one of the things that the Jewish people are commanded to do is we're commanded to do what's good in the eyes of Hashem. We're commanded to step up and to live like the ultimate role model, which is Hashem, and to do Chesed and to do uh, Tzedek and to do Emet to do kindness and social justice and to be a real or lagoim to be a light into the nations and it's uh it's for that reason that we chose to specifically have the peter and haben from maor yehuda right here overlooking harabayit see one of the things i'm going to share with you is that because because i'm not a kohen and because maor is not a kohen we will we, we will not be able to serve in the beit hamikdash and that's how we basically had the pigeon uh haben that we had today but i will tell you one thing um Ma'or and I will definitely help to build the Beit HaMikdash. And that's something which we're really excited about also. In its right time, we're looking forward to participating how we can participate. And I want to just, you know, just share a few, uh, a few miracles along the way because I know that, uh, that uh, when it comes to doing good in the world, when it comes to experiencing life and to looking for miracles and to thanking Hashem for what He gives us and thanking Hashem for what we have and for what, for what we don't have, it's been, it's been really, it's been an incredible journey along the way. And I'll never forget... One of the things that Rachel and I said as we as we basically went through 12, 12 years of being married and really loving each other and wanting to be able to have babies and I'll never forget when we got to a point that we said you know what let's 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 maybe go in let's maybe go in and look into potentially adopting a baby because they need loving parents so maybe let's go do that and you know we heard it could take a year or two or three years but we figured you know what let's at least put ourselves on the list so maybe in two or three years. We get a phone call, it's the right time, we could always choose yes, we could choose no. And what was so amazing was Rachel and I that day, we, you know, we really, we got up that day and we gave each other a hug and we headed over to the, uh, to the uh, office to look into what it would be to adopt the baby. And the lady that was in charge of the unit was asking us question after question about who we are, about what we're doing. And one of the things that she said after meeting her was, she said, you know, after the 45 minutes of meeting you and talking to you, I don't think that you're the right people to go ahead and uh, and to go ahead and to adopt a baby. I think that you want to just have it naturally because you're both so besimcha. You're both still so happy. It's not a depressing thing for you. You're not you're not lachutz. You're not pressured. You're not desperate. You're not you know you're really you're excited. You're hopeful. So just go home and have a natural baby. And we said okay, we could do that. <laughs> well, it didn't happen for a couple years. Okay. But I'll never forget, Rachel said to me, she said, Simcha, I want to let you know that if by my 32nd birthday, if when, if when I turn Lev, which is her maiden name, Lev, which is always, Rachel's a very, if you know Rachel, Rachel is a hard person. She's a really passionate, she's a really hard, she's a very heartful person. And Rachel said, you know what, if we don't have our baby by the time we're 32 years old, then we'll do it to the next level. We'll go, we'll go medical, we'll go do IVF, we'll go do whatever we have to do. And I said, whatever you want to do, we're going to go do. And, um, and uh, I'll never forget, what was so amazing was Rachel turned 32, Rachel turned lead, and uh, she said, it's time. I think, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to go ahead and to move things forward. We did everything else. We've done a lot of Ishtabut. Let's go, let's go the more medical route. And that day we went back to Agrippas and we went to go ahead and to look into what, what that procedure was going to be. And we met with them and we uh, answered questions. And I'll never forget, this is just so incredible how this worked out. That day, they said to Rachel, they said, we need to take a lot of your blood samples so that we can go ahead and we can look at your blood. They took about 15 different vials of Rachel's blood, and we went home that day. And that night was Rachel Imenu's Hilulia. Now, I, I don't know how we know exactly when her yard site is, but tradition has it here in Israel that we know when it was. And believe me, Rachel went with her friend Shira, and a bunch of other friends, and they danced the whole night long, celebrating the yard site of Racheli Menu. By the way, I think it's really beautiful that all the imahot, we know them as the imahot, as the mothers, but every one of them started off having major fertility issues. And it just goes to show you, it really is, it's not about the physical, it's about who they are as people. It's really, really beautiful to know that Rachel, 
for me, Rachel Imenu has always been my Rachel Imenu, even, if, even when we had no children. This was my Rachel Imenu over there. But that night, Rachel danced, and she danced, and she danced, and she came home that night. And Rachel's always someone who likes to go online and check out her test results. It started back in school. So that night, she went online, and she checked out her test results for her blood samples. And she said, Simcha, this is a little bit crazy, but um, I think I'm pregnant. <laughs> And I said, well, here's the deal. It's 2 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. So before we start celebrating, okay, when we don't know, let's go to sleep. <laughs> let's not get into crazy expectations land. Let's wake up tomorrow and let's confirm that with doctors who are professionals. <laughs> and she said, okay. And we didn't sleep that night, that's for sure. But we called doctors the next day and they basically informed us that from the blood test that we took for IVF, Rachel was already pregnant, naturally. This is after 12 years. I mean, to be married 12 years and have a pity on Haben, it's like it blows my mind. And when I say thank you, God, for miracles, I'm going to share with you something else. Um, just in terms of when, when Maor was actually created, this was on Rachel's birthday, according to doctors. This was Rachel's Hebrew birthday. In terms of when Maor was born, this was on my English birthday, which is really, I mean, oh my gosh, it's amazing. The Brit Milah took place on the day of Rashi's yurt site, and Rachel, and Rachel has that her family is connected to Rashi, and Rachel's really proud of uh, the fact that she's one of the descendants of Rashi. And today on Chaf Gimel Menachem Av, when we have the Pidyon Haben, is Chaf Gimel Menachem Av is literally our anniversary. What? Happy anniversary. <laughs> I'm a little late today, people. It's okay. Happy anniversary, Happy anniversary baby. But... Every now and again, I've heard of Devar Torah where the rabbi wanted to create a gematria and then it didn't really work out, so he threw in three for the Avo and he threw in one for Hashem and this for this. We don't have to do that, okay? <laughs> birthday, birthday, Rashi's your insight, Menachem our anniversary. I mean, it's just the hand of God is so present here. And it's, it, 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 it's so beautiful to be able to know that you can look for miracles, you can see miracles, you can find miracles, and you can share them with friends and family. And it's really been... It's really been just an incredible, incredible journey. Maor Yehuda, luminary of Judah, here overlooking Harabayit, which is the chazon of the Jewish people, God willing to really to come back. It's, 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 it's absolutely amazing. I'm just going to just say one more thing. It's really beautiful. I've been taking Maor out at night just for some late night walks around the block, you know? And uh, he's so cute. He's got the blue eyes that Rachel has, which is amazing. And... Um, <laughs> And when I take him out for a walk, you know, it's always incredible. I've done this about four or five times where he goes, literally, Maor goes from looking at me to the moment we go outside, Maor looks up at all the Me'orot. And he's just enamored by the moon and by the stars. And it's so interesting that Maor is attracted to, literally, other luminaries out there. And uh, every single day we say, Baruch Atah Hashem Yodzer HaMe'orot. Thank you for creating Me'orot. So I want to just thank Hashem one more time for Yodzer, this Me'orot. Because this is a very special ma'or for us, and for I think for all the Jewish people too. So, um, in closing, thank you, Kohen. Thank you, family. Thank you, friends. I love you all so much, and it's so nice to be able to celebrate smachot together. May we always be able to celebrate and dance in each other's smachot Amen. For, for, the, for the rest of our lives. From here, Amen. 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 Amen.